Okay, class, today we're going to go over different cost classifications in managerial accounting or cost accounting. Um, we're going to go over some definitions here. Uh, first of all, we've got fixed costs versus variable costs. Fixed costs are costs that, that they don't change with changes, no changes with changes in volume. So, uh, at least within the relevant range. So, let's, let's assume uh, that we're manufacturing tables, okay? Just simple tables, some lumber, a little bit of hardware with them. Um, but we manufacture tables. Well, in the facility that we're renting, uh, that's where we manufacture these, these, these tables. So let's say that our rent is $5,000 a month. Okay, over here I've got a little graph. Um, and let's say that this is $5,000 right here. Okay, and this is one table, two tables, three tables, four tables. Okay, we get the idea. All right, so this is how many tables that we're manufacturing. It doesn't matter how many tables we manufacture, the rent is 5,000. It's fixed, okay? So that's what we're saying here. No changes with changes in volume, okay? Now, I do have to point out that that's within the relevant range, okay? At some point, we can only manufacture, well, we can only manufacture so many tables in this facility. So let's say we can manufacture uh, 10,000 tables in a month, okay? We, we, can't, we can't manufacture anymore, there's just not, the, the facilities aren't big enough to manufacture more. So if we started manufacturing, let's say 15,000, or had demand for 15,000 tables, we'd have to find another place to rent, maybe for $5,000 more, okay? So within the relevant range, meaning one, two, however many that we can uh, manufacture in that time period, that's our relevant range, and the cost is fixed within that relevant range, okay? Now we've got variable costs. These change in proportion to volume. Volume meaning how many tables we're manufacturing. Okay, so let me change this now, uh, the scenario. Uh, let's say, got to erase that line. Um, let's say that the materials, the lumber that goes into these tables uh, cost us $50, okay? So we've got $50 right here, okay? If we manufacture one table, we're gonna incur $50. Okay. If we manufacture two tables, well, two tables will require $100 worth of lumber or materials. So then that would go up here. So you can see here that we've got a variable cost. Okay, Every time we manufacture another table, it's going to cost us $50 more in materials to manufacture that table. So that's what we're saying here. Changes in proportion to volume. All right. Now here are some other terms, um, direct and indirect cost. Direct costs are traceable to a single cost object. So in my example, the cost object is the table, okay? Costs that, can, that go directly into the table are, are direct costs, okay? So things that go directly into the table would be uh, the materials and the lumber. Those are the direct costs. Materials, lumber, and labor. Okay, that's what I meant to say, not lumber, but uh, materials and the labor go directly into uh, the table. Indirect costs are not easily traceable to the cost object. We're going to put them in there as overhead, but they're indirect. Such things as um, a supervisor's salary. Okay, the supervisor over the plant, um, his salary or her salary needs to go into the cost of the table, whatever we're manufacturing. Okay, that would be an indirect cost because. It would be very difficult for us to figure out exactly how much of that supervisor's salary or, or time is going into the table. So we're going to allocate that. It's going to be an indirect cost. Uh, let's say that we need glue for these tables, just a little bit of glue here and there to put these tables together uh, to make them more sturdy. Well, we're not going to measure that glue. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cost. It's a material that goes in, okay? But it's indirect because we're not going to sit there and measure, okay, let's see how much glue are we putting in this, okay? So indirect costs, they, they go into the product, but they're just not easily traceable into the product, whereas the direct costs are very easily traceable. So we, can, we know how much, like the person who, who, who assembles the table, we know exactly how much time he or she is putting into that table, and also uh, the lumber, the materials. Okay? So that's the difference between direct and indirect costs. Now, let's go on to a few more costs. Uh, we've got product costs and period costs. Product costs, costs needed to produce the product. Costs.
amounts needed to produce the product, okay? And these would be such things as the direct materials, what I was just talking about, the direct labor, okay? Direct materials would be the lumber, direct labor, the people who are manufacturing or assembling uh, or painting, putting together the, the table in our example, and um, overhead, overhead costs. Now, some, some books use fit, uh, factory overhead, so F-O-H. Some use manufacturing overhead, M-O-H, okay? I'll typically try and probably just use overhead, O-H, okay? But it's the same as factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. It's the overhead that goes into the product. Um, so these are the costs that go into our product, okay? So if we're manufacturing in a certain plant, our product, all the costs associated with that plant would be product costs. Period costs, are non-production costs. And they're expensed in the period incurred. So I'm just going to put underneath here, expense in period, they're expensed in the period of occurred. So when, when, they're, when they take place, that's when we expense them. When they happen, we expense them in that time period, okay? Versus the product costs will go into inventory first, right? They'll become raw materials, work in process, okay, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But the product costs become inventory first, so they're an asset for us, and then once we sell them, they'll become cost of goods sold. But we'll see that a little bit later, all right? So these, these period costs are our selling, general, and administrative costs. Okay, so I usually like to, this is like the home office, okay, or our selling locations, okay. This would be, those would be period costs, okay. The manufacturing area, our product costs, and then our administrative type areas would be period costs. So anything associated with selling, general and administrative costs would be expensed in the period incurred, okay. So we've got our product costs and our period costs. Well, let's move on. Again, we've got our direct materials. I'm just going to abbreviate direct materials. I'll usually abbreviate DM. Uh, direct labor, DL. Those are the wages of the employees who physically convert the materials into our product. Okay, so these are the wages of employees who physically. convert uh, the materials into our product, okay? And then like I said before, we've got our overhead also, okay? And these are all manufacturing costs uh, that aren't direct materials or direct labor. So all other manufacturing costs then would be accumulated under overhead, okay? And the direct materials are the materials that go directly into the product that we can measure. Okay, once again, let me point out, that's like the lumber for our table, the lumber hardware, you know, those costs that are very easily traceable into the product versus like glue or maybe nails or screws. We're not gonna count those things. Those are, those are kind of insignificant costs they are material costs, but they're kind of insignificant, so we're going to call them indirect materials, and we'll keep those under uh, overhead. So indirect materials and indirect over and labor, sorry, indirect materials and indirect labor would be part of overhead. And our indirect labor, once again, would be like supervisors, uh, possibly the janitors in, the, in that facility, okay? Janitors that work in the, in the um, offices, our main office, our administrative offices, those would be period costs. Okay, so janitors, you know, it just depends on where they're located. If they're in a production plant, then they'd be overhead. Okay, they're set their, their wages. Okay, now we've got prime costs and we've got uh, conversion costs. Whenever you hear prime costs, that's direct materials and direct labor. It's the prime costs that go directly into our product. 
materials and labor. Versus conversion costs are those costs that we use to convert the materials into our product. So the cost that we use to convert these materials into our product would be direct labor and our overhead. Okay, so those are our conversion costs. Direct labor and the overhead. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. Let's move on. Okay. On our balance sheet, we're going to have uh, raw materials inventory. I'm going to abbreviate that, RM. Uh, work in process or work in progress, WIP, we call it the WIP, W-I-P, and finished goods. These are all inventory categories. I'm just going to put inventories. Okay, so these are assets that we own, and they're on our balance sheet, raw materials inventory. So this is before we started manufacturing. We just purchased the materials. Once we start manufacturing those, they become work in process. We move them into a different category, okay, in a different account. Work in process meaning we're, we're manufacturing, we're putting this table together. Once it's all done, then those costs will move into finished goods. Okay, on our income statement, I'm going to abbreviate that, IS, the income statement has our cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. Hmm? Cost of goods sold or COGS is an expense. Remember when we sell our inventory item, it comes out of inventory, we'll take it out of finished goods once it's sold, so we'll reduce finished goods, and then we'll recognize our expense. Okay? So it comes out of an asset and we expense it. And that's where we calculate our profit, depending on what we sold it for. If we sold the table for $200 and it was in our inventory at $150, then we'd have a profit of $50. Okay? We would take the $150 out of inventory and we'd expense that. Okay? <clears throat> Another thing I want to point out here is our beginning inventory plus our net material purchases gets us what we have available available to sell. Okay? And uh, this would be our cost of goods manufactured. cost of goods manufactured. The cost of goods manufactured is our beginning inventory of, of products plus our purchases during the year. That's what we have available to sell for our cost of goods manufactured. So these two items go into this, cost of goods manufactured. And then we either still have it, if we still have it, then it's in ending inventory, EI, ending inventory, or if we sold it, it's cost of goods sold. So let me just do an example here. Let's say we had 100,000 in beginning inventory and during the period, we purchased materials of 900000 That means that we have cost of goods uh, manufactured of a million dollars. A million dollars of cost in what we have available to sell, our cost of goods manufactured. If we only have 50000 at the end of the period left, then that means we have cost of goods sold of 950000 Okay. So mathematically, it all works. We don't lose stuff here, okay? So beginning inventory plus what we purchase gets us what we have available to sell or our cost, cost of the goods that we manufactured. We either still have it, ending inventory, or we sold it, 950000 okay? All right, let's stop there. I'll do another video on uh, inventory and how costs flow through the system, all right? Okay, class, thanks.